hello Eloise hello again hi Jackie um, I guess what we can do is just start off with maybe just a quick intro so if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and then a little bit about your background yeah of course well um as you know my name is Eloise I'm a, a dietitian HCPC dietitian um, and I specialize in my speciality is diabetes um, so I work with people with all types of different um you know different types of diabetes um but within that you know we have um experience on for example people will present with low iron um so we have to be able to give that general advice there um been doing this for many years now which is really nice um and I was honored when um, I was asked to uh, to talk um because as a a black person um I have personal experience in this area as well so you know thank you for asking me to come along today thank you. excellent thank you so much for that so um you know with your background and I guess your best place to really tell us what exactly is iron deficiency yeah so iron deficiency I find it quite interesting, actually, um, because the um, iron deficiency is all to do with that mineral, you know, that you can get from your food. Um, and it's used, as Olivia already said, um, to help us to boost our hemoglobin. So we need it. It's, you know, it's an essential and we do need it. Um, and this iron is um, the iron that we eat in our food is well absorbed into the body. Um, so we, we need it to ensure that we're keeping our levels high so we don't have all the other symptoms, which we're probably going to go into, um, that are going to make us not feel too good. So fundamentally, or in summary, without the iron, you're going to find that your haemoglobin, which is like your red blood cells, you know, that level is going to fall and then you're going to um, experience different types of symptoms. So in that case, then... Mm. Um, you know, you said we're going to go into the symptoms and, you know, hemoglobin can go down. Yeah. What what are some of the other symptoms of iron deficiency that people can typically kind of experience? What are some of the telltale signs, I suppose? Well, it's an interesting one because in the, the world that we live in now, I call it the microwave era where everything is now, 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 now. Some of the symptoms can get very skewed and you just think, well, I've had a hard day. Life is a bit tough at the moment and the symptoms are not really observed. So it could be things like, you're feeling fatigue, yeah, and you're constantly feeling a little bit tired um, and things like that. Um, then you've also got shortness of breath, um, but I find that that's another one of those symptoms that is not always identified um, because I think we learn to adapt. <laughs> you know, we, we learn to adapt and just sort of get on with things. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've got fatigue, we've got tiredness, but then um, from more of a biological um, standpoint, you know, we can get arrhythmia where our heart is sort of like tachycardic and, we're, you know, it's really beating. Um, so it's overcompensating because it's not getting all what, all what it needs. So, yeah. So if you do ever have any of those symptoms, um, please go to your GP, because I think that sometimes there's that element of, oh, no, it will be OK tomorrow when really, you know, it, you could get your, your iron levels checked. And you could have a supplement or as what we're going to go into, um, maybe food that's going to help to boost it. OK, I see. Yeah. All right. That's really interesting. So, yes, the diet is really important. So, yeah. out, uh, so outside of, well, I guess diet including and outside of diet, yeah. what are some of the main causes of iron deficiency? So, um, so as we're talking about iron deficiency from the standpoint of um, giving blood, not really patients who are living with sickle cell. Um, so, sorry, I missed the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying <laughs> that's fine. The question was, what are some of the causes okay. for iron deficiency, yeah. including diet and things that perhaps are not diet related? Yeah. OK, so diet is definitely one. You know, we don't have a varied, uh, we don't have a varied diet, which means we're not consuming the amount of iron that we need in our in our diet. And then that can have a consequence and it can it can add to the iron deficiency. So diet. Um, but then there's there's other elements. So it could be sickle cell, for example, that's going to have an impact on our diet and also just um, uh, ladies and menstrual cycle. So I think a lot of the time um, there's that element of this could be somebody's norm and a heavy cycle could be someone's norm, but then that norm could also add to the fact that um, 
you know, you're iron deficient. Um, for ladies who may have had a, a baby, you know, um, if you've, you've lost a lot of blood there, then, you know, you might be, you might end up having to stay in and they'll have to correct this or they'll, they'll ask you to just sort of um, substitute your diet with some additional iron boosting um, elements there or something quite simple. You're losing blood because you've had an accident, you know, a car accident or something like that. And you've lost a lot of blood as we lose blood. We're losing, we're losing iron with it at the same time. Yeah, so there's, there's quite a few different ways of why somebody could be um, deficient. Um, so, yeah. And that's really interesting there because you touched on menstrual cycles and women mm. that have had a baby. So, mm. you know, kind of staying in that in that area, you know, other than I know women, we have our menstrual cycles, but are there other groups of people that tend to kind of have lower iron like maybe from uh, I don't know genetic things or Ooh. just other illnesses um is there anything else you can tell us about that so there's there's um the, the groups element to be honest I can't answer that one um because I've not done any research in that in that but they could be because you do have uh, people who live with chronic iron deficiency but then it's looking into why you know why is that happening um so i can't really talk on that element there um and then there is i'm really losing my chain of thought today <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you mentioned um people that have chronic iron deficiency yeah, yeah that's something that even i've i've, I've i have familiarity right. with yeah so um yeah so outside of things like the menstrual cycle and women you know i suppose mm -hmm. um maybe like uh i don't know if I was just wondering if men also, if they're like groups of men who perhaps have, I don't know, some genetic disorder or anything else that might cause them to have um, low iron. I mean, ge genetics is an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's all, it plays a part in um, all, our health as a whole. Um, as I said earlier, that's not something that I have the expertise on, um, but I'm more than happy to, you know, have a look into it a little bit further and, and get back to you. Um, I, I would never like to give incorrect advice just by saying something on the cuff. But if that's anyone true. knows, especially anyone in the audience, if anyone knows of anything, um, you know, please share, please share. That's clear. That's 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 clear. Thank you. Thank you for that mm. point. Yeah. So just kind of like thinking about that, then can you actually have too much iron is that is there an excessive amount can that be kind of detrimental you can so if we stand if we're talking from the standpoint of sickle cell um you definitely can because um by being overloaded with iron can push somebody into a crisis and that's definitely what we don't want you know it's not what we want there so um just putting that caveat if someone especially in the audience is listening and they do have sickle cell it's really looking at their um blood therapy management speaking with their healthcare professionals and um, understanding what the levels are right for them okay so that's really important um, if someone with sickle cell is deemed to have um, iron deficiency um, then their consultant and their healthcare providers will help them to and, and dietitian will help them to build those levels up there so if we're going to the general population, someone who's thinking, well, I would love to give blood, listening to what Olivia said there, um, at the start in regards to, you know, uh, people from black heritage, it would be great if we could give more blood, but they also seem to have low iron levels. Um, there are definitely ways that we can work together to build um, your iron levels. And it can just be from the standpoint of um, your, your nutrition. So from a nutrition point of view and um, overload that's less likely but from a supplement supplementation supplement standpoint yes that's something that, that can happen you can you can have too much iron and we wouldn't want that so we would recommend that you stick to you know the advice and the dose that you've been recommended and not sort of trying to rush the process it, it takes time it takes time Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that's really good to note that you can have yeah. that through the supplement part, but not so much with through the diet part. Yeah. So in terms of that, um, just kind of thinking about increasing your iron, are there mm -hmm. ways to do that through food sources? Yeah, definitely. So if you were, so I'll just jump into the supplements. So if you were giving a supplement, it would be, you know, seeing if you could um, to um, marry your iron with maybe vitamin c taking it at the same time and ensuring that 
so it's well absorbed that's the point of that we want to ensure that it's well, it's well absorbed um but then with a food foods that are i quite I, I always say they're quite rich you know so you've got things like liver which i don't know how popular that is <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's very popular at all i, I, I don't think that's very popular <laughs> but it's interesting because when i was growing i do remember my dad sauteing this liver and giving it to us and we were like oh so I'm not too sure why he did that it's not yeah I don't think it's as popular but you can get pates which are made from liver and you know you can put that on your on your bread there and you'll be getting some sauces um from it there um kidneys you know that's another sauce there <laughs> black pudding again culturally I don't find that I um see many people um having black pudding but that's still another another good source and then you know you've got your red meat and things like that but if you're not a meat eater don't worry there's still elements there that you can you know you can introduce into your diet to get it to get it in so um it's important if you um do have um bread to have a look and see if your bread is fortified so when i say fortified it's there's extra things added in so it could be um could be vitamin d which is a great thing we all need that that could be some iron thiamine and other and other sources as well yeah so see if we can get some bread that's already um uh, fortified then got eggs yeah that's it eggs depending if you eat eggs or if you're like vegan or not you know you'll make you'll make a choice there and then the typical i always say this one you know the green leafy vegetables so the darker the better some nine green, nice green leafy vegetables it's going to help with your iron but it's also going to help with just ensuring that you're consuming the amount of uh increasing your vegetables throughout the day because generally we need to have five portions of fruit and vegetables a day uh yeah um <laughs> and i it's an interesting one because i always say to the people that i'm working with when you're cooking your meal what is your first thought process is it your meat is it your carbohydrates or is it is it your vegetables and i do find that the vegetables can be the last thought or it can just be a little garnish on the plate like, oh, I'll have a little bit of salad. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. But you're getting a lot, you know, you're helping with your iron stores there and also your vitamins and minerals of other sources there. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's loads, I think there's that's, loads of ways. I think that's really great. And I'm glad that you touched on the part of, you know, for people that are vegan, because I find that people are opting for more of a vegan diet yeah, um, now. And and I, I've always heard that, you know, there's um, that struggle um, to get, you know, all the vitamins in from a vegan diet. But it's really good to hear that, you know, yeah. leafy, leafy greens and things like that, which are a staple in the vegan diet is, is a good source. Well, so, <laughs> that's an interesting, Jackie, though, because, um, you know, you can be vegan and still not be as healthy as you probably some people would think you are. Um, and if you are vegan, I always advocate, please ensure that you're eating as much of your fruit and your, your fruit and your vegetables as you can and less of the processed foods and ultra processed foods. Um, so it's a win win for anyone. If you're vegan, vegetarian, you're a meat eater, um, if you're, you're iron deficiency or not, increase your vegetables, increase your vegetables. <laughs> So I have a tough question for you now, actually. Let me, let me drink some water. I, <laughs> so I know this is probably something you do with your diabetic patients all the mm -hmm. time. But just in general, um, can you kind of run us through a little bit of a meal plan, maybe a vegetarian meal plan that yeah. is high in iron, maybe like the breakfast and the lunch and the dinner, like what could that look like? Like what could that entail? Yeah, for a vegetarian person, for, I find I know, you, hard for you. Yeah, I know. Like, why? Are you making it so hard? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, we can. Um, that's that's fine. So, it's not as hard as we think to get iron in the diet. And I think sometimes when people are deficient, um, you, you know, your, your brain's just thinking, "How am I going to get more and more?" The the first thing I would say is just try and have a varied diet. OK, if we try and vary our diet as much as we can, you're going to hit lots of different points. As I was saying earlier, if you are um, trying to get more vegetables in, again, variety. Yeah. So don't stick to just the same thing. So, you know, spinach, we want to see if we can get some variety in there because that's also going to support. So let's go for it then. So vegan. So you say vegan? Or vegan. Vegetarian? You know what? I think we should go with vegan, actually. Oh, Make it even harder. 
all right cool that's <laughs> so um if you're going to have cereals for example i would say please try and see if you can have some try and find cereals that are fortified okay that's got added iron in there um and then that the, your um non-dairy milk sources again that's the same thing so um when you go to the supermarket it's really important to have a look at it so let's use oat milk for example um because i use that in my house as well if you go to Lidl, good old Lidl, there's other food stores and all sorts of that. <laughs> let's, let's do that caveat. Um, there are two types and one isn't fortified at all. Um, and one is also, and one is fortified. So it's just taking that little time just to see, you know, if the foods are fortified there. Um, then it could be, you know, you're having, so that's one breakfast idea there. It could be you're having um, some wholemeal bread. Okay, so not bleached. Want it to be nice and good, wholesome wholemeal, um, nuts and seeds. If you can get the you know breads with that nuts and seed added, that's going to help you there as well. And then maybe some fruit, some fruit with that there. Um, so yeah, that's vegan. That sounds really boring for vegan because I've got lots <laughs> of ideas. If it wasn't vegan, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, and then if we're thinking about lunchtime, so things like hummus. Yeah, so you've got your you know your chickpeas there. That's go- that's going to be higher. Um, going to have a good amount of um, um, iron in it there and what else could we have for for lunch Um, I want to say avocados but I don't think that that's high in iron Um, but it's good for you good fats so let's have it as that (laughs) Um, so adding that to the sauce adding that to the um, to there and then lentils that was another one Lentil. I was just about to ask that because when you mentioned hummus, I was like, oh, but what about lentils? Yeah, lentils. Lentils is a good one as well. So it could be, you know, if you can buy them, um, you can buy them, you know, in the, the big packs and then make your own lentil soup. You can make it in batches as well, which is just awesome. You know, put them in your little containers and you can take that to work there. Um, I know the weather's getting a bit warm and I find that soup start going to the side when, when the weather <laughs> gets a bit warmer. But um, really fundamentally, it's all about variety. And if you are um, vegan, I'm hoping that, you know, you are a bit of a, you enjoy cooking. That's the, thing, that's the, the first thing I'd uh, recommend because we want to make sure that you're eating foods that, um, you know, you're getting lots of different um, vitamins and, and minerals from there. So, yeah, so that's for a vegan. And then your evening meal, mm, let's have a look. What could I think of for... Um, I want to say um, like a mushroom casserole. However, I can't put my, I can't 100% say. I could quickly have a look at my little fact sheet here. Um, but yeah, something like, um, something like um, mushrooms. But then you, you do, this is where your um, processed foods kind of thing would come in as well, because you've got, you know, maybe some sausages that you can get vegan sausages and also tofu and soya and 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 things like that really variety is the key variety is the key and then also um educating yourself on the foods you know especially if you are iron deficient educating yourselves on the foods that are high in um iron that you like that suits your your choice of how you eat you can speak with dietitians as well that can support you along the way um like myself or even a nutritionist as well, they can support you along the way in regards to providing some information on that. I always say as well, try and get yourself that like a little crib sheet. So once yeah. you find some foods that work for you, you know, and it's hitting those points. So, you know, we're talking about iron for people who are, don't have sickle cell, um, you know, find those foods and maybe utilize the inside of your, um, your cupboards, you know, put that list in there no one ain't gonna see it because sometimes we forget we do all this research store it on our computers or our phone and then we forget but then it'll become staple especially if you um you know you're experiencing chronic um um, iron deficiency as well you're going to want to stay on top of it aren't you absolutely Mm. absolutely I think that was really um useful and I I was a little bit selfish there because I (laughs) I'm trying to be more of a vegan and have more kind of vegetables and more greens in my diet so I was very keen to kind of hear what you would say in terms of what your (laughs) suggestions are and I'm very glad that you mentioned um lentils and chickpeas because I love those all of those are in my diet yes yes all the all the lentils all of them so yeah I'm really glad you said that (laughs) (laughs) You know what I wanted to ask now is yeah. um, 
and I've heard this and you can correct me. I don't know if this is a myth, but mm -hmm. um, there are foods that can help you to absorb iron better. So people often say you should have orange juice when you're having spinach or something like that, because yeah. it helps you to. So let's say I think it's vitamin C. Is that something that's true? It is. It really is. So um, vitamin C, citrus fruits you find that they are they're high in vitamin C and it just helps to absorb the iron into the cells rather than it just sort of floating around and not going into the cells as we need them to so it could be something simple as having like 150 ml of orange juice when you're taking when you're taking your iron supplements maybe with your breakfast or, th or something like that um tomatoes again they're quite good as well they can help you absorb your iron in that way um I mean if you don't have it if you don't have any say um uh, citrus fruits with you or anything like that if you have it with your main meal then i would say nine times out of ten you may be getting some of the um you know some of the vitamin c which is going to help you if you're having it with a snack for example something that's processed a packet of crisps you know you're not really it's not really going to support that absorption there so yeah it's not it's not a myth it, it does help Help. Oh, it's good to know. Just okay, help. good. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned supplements before, right? Mm. So, um, so I can speak for myself. I take like a multivitamin, but I just wanted mm -hmm. to know: is there something better to take to kind of help increase with iron levels? Like, what would you recommend, Ferroglobin? <laughs> so, if you um, first thing, first and foremost, I would say definitely speak with your healthcare provider okay. because if you if you're hitting a level where they feel that you need a higher dosage, then they're going to give you some supplements. Um, I find that um, what's the word? I would say concordance, but um, what is the word? Just general word. So um, people taking those supplements, um, the ability for them to keep on with that treatment regime um, sometimes can be up and down and that's because there's side effects from taking some of the higher doses of supplements um iron supplements such as like constipation and, and really dark stools and you know it's, it's uncomfortable and if if you are experiencing that try and persevere try and increase that fruit and vegetable i think i feel like i'm just advocating fruit and vegetables today <laughs> It's always a good thing. It is, it is, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Um, try and increase that and also increase your fluid intake to help, you know, soften things up and help them to pass. If you really, really can't per persevere with it, then please, you know, go back and speak with them because if you just stop taking them, then the, the, you're still in the same situation, aren't you? Um, so, yeah. Ah, I see. That's really mm -hmm. useful. So, you know, we were going to come into, um, you know, what happens to those people that really do struggle with the supplements. Mm -hmm. So that's really useful to learn that they can just kind of try to increase their fluid intake and yeah. just try and persevere through it. <laughs> but I guess it yes. all goes back to, like you said before, just kind of trying to boost things through the diet. Mostly, I think that's probably the best yeah. way, would you say? Yeah, well, it is the best way, unless, you know, your levels are so low that you do need a loading dose. And that would be the reason why, you know, you've been prescribed that. But if you can get there with, you know, you can get there first with your with your nutrition, then, you know, any things that we eat in its natural form, the body knows what to do with it. Yeah. So, yeah, if you know that this is something that you experience or you have been and you've had a blood test and they say, oh, you're slightly, slightly a little bit low, you know, try and see if you can do it yourself. Um, the British Dietetic Association, so that's the BDA, um, they have some fantastic fact sheets. I'm more than happy to share it with you if you want to share it with the, with the people that are, are watching. And they give some really practical advice, you know, some lovely lists um, with the quantities as well on how you can increase your iron levels there. So that might be something help. Again, that can go inside your fridge, inside your cupboard. Could you oh, imagine what inside my cupboard looks like? <laughs> really healthy. <laughs> Lots of vegetables, I imagine. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So I, I wanted to ask you actually, this is and this is kind of a question for me. Mm -hmm. Um in terms of uh, the supplements, again, um, I know mm. some people do struggle with the supplements. And like you said, some of these are, yeah. you know, this, they might have to persevere through it. Um, I've taken liquid iron before and I haven't really noticed those symptoms. So is that is it the case that liquid iron versus maybe iron in the tablet form? Mm. Do they have the same symptoms or, or is it just the iron in general? 
so it, the, the difference is about the bio 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 availability of it um so it's going to be in a, a it's in a form that the body can process just a little quicker then as if we can process it a little quicker then you know it's, it's getting through trans and um transiting through it through and then it's absorbing a little quicker some people don't find that they benefit um more so from the iron um liquid um but some do i mean it's it's easier to put in your your juice as we were talking um before um if you can't take tablets very well then this is another you know better way of, of getting your iron in there and I always say really what works best for you as a person, because if you are, you know, there's no use saying, no, the tablets are better than the iron, but then someone doesn't um, do well with taking tablets. So there's also that personal preference that comes into play. And to be honest, that comes into play with nutrition, with health and everything, um, because if it doesn't work for you, then you're just not going to do it. So then you're not going to be getting any benefits at all. So, yeah, so there's, there's, an ele- there's an element of um, improved by bioavailability, but not more so than I would say, you know, definitely go for that route. And secondly, you've got to weigh up the costs as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you for clearing that up for me. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that. So I'm coming up to my last question now. So and, and this is an interesting one also for me because I've 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 had iron deficiency anemia. I've had that. Uh-huh how long does it take to actually recover because I really don't know how long is it like Mm. a day or is it two days or is it three months how long does it generally take or is it down to the individual well it's there's there's the element of down to the individual but then there's also you've got to think of it like this so all of the things that we've just been talking about there so we've got you know your diet you know also you know what things um do you smoke um which is going to also have an impact there are you taking your supplements if you are prescribed supplements so there's there's those things which I know sound quite simple but you know they play a really big role in it there um generally something between two to three months okay but then we also have to remember that every three months our red blood cell dies and we start again yeah 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 so when we start again we want to ensure that there's a good foundation there's a good building blocks there and you know we're building up that red blood cell the way it needs to be yeah so then that means it's full it's packed with all the richness that it needs to so um so basically you're going on a three-month cycle (laughs) (laughs) so sort of say to yourself right three months I'm going to try and really have a look at my diet there do a little bit of research um you need to speak to someone speak to someone um and try and increase you know the foods that are richer in um iron in my diet and see how that works secondly um don't be shy ask your gp if you can have another uh, blood test maybe in four months time or something you know once you've kind of exceeded that three months um and then i'd probably say within that time when you're trying to build up giving blood um even if you're on the cusp just enough it may not be (laughs) olivia don't shoot me (laughs) may not be the right time um because you want to build it up because as olivia said at the start you build it up and then imagine if you go and give blood and then you you know you've you've brought it right back down and you you're up and down up and down up and down and then it's going to have that impact on the symptoms that we were talking about so the breathless feeling tired you know and also we want to ensure that we're protecting the heart at the same time because there's an element there so yeah in two to three months Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. That really answers all the questions that I had. And, Mm -hmm. you know, in summary, it sounds like the most critical factor is diet, having those good things in the diet, the nuts, the leafy vegetables, Mm. those things, um, good sources of iron, and also having those citrus foods as well, so that your body absorbs the iron as well. So that's really useful. And that variety, making sure that, you know, we're trying to increase the variety in your diet, because as you increase the variety in your diet, it's going to help with so many things. And that's really what we want. That's really what we want. Excellent. Thank you. I think that that's it. That's it from my end. Then I guess, Olivia, we can move on to the audience to see if they have any questions.